Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Many ask this question. Isn't it a matter of disbelief to vote or it's allowed? If it's allowed, if it's allowed, in what circumstance? First of all, we have to admit that it is not justifiable to vote if the two candidates, they both hate Islam, they both do not care about Allah's constitution, Allah's sharia. Second, when none of them or both of them will be affecting the Muslims, whether negatively or positively, just leave it. Saying that, because we believe that those who have the knowledge of Islam, those people of fiqh, understanding of the sharia of Allah, so those are, let's have six, five of them who have the great knowledge of Islam, the Quran, okay? So those are worthy for consultation, shura, not the plumbers and the electricians, corrupt people, gambling people, ignorant people, people like that should not be participating in the fate of the ummah, the fate of the nation. Unlike the uh, parliament voting or the public voting. How much more if among the ummah, among those people, there are those who are fanatically affiliated, inclining to their own party, fanatically or racistly. So that means it is not of corruption. It's chaotic. It is not Islamic. But when the interest of the ummah necessitates to do so, then it is justifiable to vote on that intention. If we have two parties, one of them is enemy to Islam and giving their full hand to the West, to the outsiders, promising that we're going to be with you on your side, we're going to cancel Islam, we're, we're going to fight Islam, we're going to revive secularism and the teachings of Ataturk, etc., etc. When we have this party, on the other hand, we have another party who may say we're seculars, okay? But what we see in practice during the 20 years of uh, Erdogan presidency, we can realize that there's a big difference. This man had caused the falling of secularism, even if he belongs to it. And he made a great progress in reviving Islam. What do we do in this case? We let those enemies swallow Turkey or give it just like a piece of cake to the Westerners who say, wow, now, mashallah, we're good Muslims, all right? It's not allowed to vote, but... Look, look what's happening. As a matter of consequence, the West will be the greatest winners if those enemies of Islam will be successful. We have one party that promises to expel two million Syrians. Hundreds of thousands among them are going to be dead if they are expelled and thrown to Syria. Wow! The, the Syrian regime won't be sparing them. It's going to be killing them, jailing them. They just ran away from oppression, from brutality. If we find a party that promised to keep those people, even if it's for that reason, you vote for them, you are applying one of the verses of Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
وما لكم لا تقاتلون في سبيل الله والمستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان الذين يقولون ربنا أخرجنا من هذه القرية الظالم أهلها واجعل لنا من لدنك وليا واجعل لنا من لدنك نصيرا And why shouldn't you be fighting for the cause of Allah while the oppressed people among them women, children as well as men they keep saying our Lord take us out from this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us and appoint for us from yourself a helper if there's a party that says if we won the election we're not gonna let those people be expelled we'll keep them if you vote for that reason only this is justified you're not blamed you're not becoming kafir disbeliever as some ignorant brothers say I myself do not support voting and I never voted but in this circumstance when there is a struggle a confrontation between a party of faithlessness who is ready promising to expel the weakened people throwing them back to Syria and the other party says if we won we we're not gonna let them out yes this is what the interest of the ummah requires among the worst thing that the West is doing oppressively unjustly is accusing Erdogan to be the greatest feared dictator many layman European people and Americans they were astonished saying why 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 those Western countries were happy with the dictator of Tunisia bin Ali why they were bringing people from Afghanistan and give putting them in the prisons of Qaddafi why Qaddafi was okay was it a matter of throwing money for them why they're okay with the most dictator presidents they did not see any dictator in the world except Erdogan or it is a matter of retaliation for not complying to the West he doesn't want to comply to the West they want to punish him they want to give him lessons in order to throw him away there are many other reasons like uh, making Turkey progressive militantly economically why America allows itself to interfere in the internal Turkish affairs but it will never allow any outsider to interfere with the in, in, in internal American affairs why well I think it's stupid for me to keep asking these logic questions because they will not be caring about my questions just ignore the contradictions because of the because of the political interests ironically this opposition party which is supposed to be secular non-religious this man Kamal this man says I am Alawite he's seeking refuge with sectarianism in order to retain secularism so this pragmatic had made sectarianism as means to return secularism Wow <laughs> we can see a great achievement in Turkey so Turkey wants to be independent no that's not allowed we must divide Turkey 
we must downfall the Turkish currency. We must pay billions to orchestrate a coup d'etat which failed achievements. Other progress is the phenomena of hijab, is the establishing of Islamic school in every city in Turkey. To the extent that some counselors, they were giving gift to the children who are proven to be performing Fajr prayer in the masjid. Things that had not happened before. Imagine Erdogan brings the daughter of a woman who used to be stoned by children on the street because she wore the hijab. And she was expelled. And she was persecuted in Turkey. Where, where is the democracy that seculars have for us? They promise us to live in life as if we are in Jannah, paradise. Her daughter was the translator between Joe Biden and Erdogan with the, with the hijab. I can see that this is a message that Erdogan wanted to send to the West, that this is Turkey today, unlike what it used to be before. Secularism cannot be leading except by force and dictatorship. In the Muslim world, people didn't like it. People are not happy with it. People returned to their religion. Well, we have to create for them Daesh, ISIS, in order to get rid of Islam under the umbrella of ISIS, Qaeda, etc., etc. That's what they're doing. That is why we justify only this election and every election when it comes to this critical circumstance like what's happening in Turkey, yes, we justify it. Otherwise, primarily, originally, voting is haram. But when there is an interest for the ummah and there's a, a confrontation between two parties, one of them is promising to eliminate Islam and the other one had proven during their leadership, and I mean by that the party of Al-Adala wa Tanmiya, the party of Erdogan, had proven that they made a great progress. Today, Muslims are proud of their religion. They are practicing Islam. So therefore, I say, it is not a matter of disbelief, especially when we vote based on this particular intention and deeds are justified by intention. That is our intention. So there is no blame, inshallah. We're not going to insult or be hostile against the other people who say, you know, it's a matter of disbelief if you vote. We say, may Allah bless you. That's your opinion. And this is what we tried our opinion. We ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us if we're wrong and to forgive the other party if they're wrong. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.